I'm drinking Live Forever tea today. It's green tea with jasmine. And on the back it says, you may have noticed as you've gotten older how time slips like beach sand through your hands. You can buy a yacht, a fancy convertible, a toupee, bigger breasts and expensive face creams. But the one thing you can't buy is time. Until now, that is. Our tea is spiked with antioxidants and literally adds minutes to your life. Its rejuvenating qualities are scientifically proven. So pull out that 600,000 piece jigsaw puzzle you've been itching to do. Read the encyclopedia, learn Japanese. And while you're at it, why not walk to Japan? You've got all the time you need. See? And she's saying, honey, what time is it? And he's saying, who cares? <coughs> Greetings, fans of the surreal, the stylish and the esoteric. This week on Tea and Tara, we are going to be reviewing a lovely tarot deck by Julian Paco. It's called the Hidden Message Tarot. And I ought to warn you, I'm going to do a flip through, but that's going to be right at the end of this video. So if you're just here for the flip through, then it's at the end. I've got a birthday coming up, but I thought I'd treat myself to a new tarot deck. I've been fairly boring over the years. I've been a bit stuck in the old ride away at Smith and I sometimes branch out into the Aquarian, but I've never really taken the leap and used a really wacky deck. They say I should get myself the Thoth deck and I probably should, but I find it somehow stressful to look at. So I thought, okay, let's do this properly. I will uh, I'll Google around on the internet and I'll just see what's out there. Of course, once you start Googling, there's a lot of tarot packs out there. There are the, the big companies like US Game Systems who they bring out new decks, they, they reprint old favourites, and then there's a very big sector of independently produced tarot decks. And while I was Googling around, I, I found directories of tarot decks. There seemed to be hundreds of them out there. I found there were a lot of decks I didn't want to work with. Some of them are clearly too kitsch, some of them aren't kitsch enough. Some of them are too brainy, some of them are too sexy. I, I don't want a tarot pack full of gorgeous naked people. I, I, I want to read the tarot when I'm reading the tarot. I began to feel that I would quite like a tarot deck that was in some way a bit surreal. I think reading tarot is a kind of deliberately induced waking dream. And I think surrealism does bring us into this dream state. There's a tarot deck designed by Salvador Dali, and of course, he's a great artist and it's very attractive and one is a little bit tempted. But I looked at the cards and I thought, I think Dali's personality is slightly swamping this project. I think if one did a, a tarot reading with this deck, it would just all be about Salvador Dali, so I'll pass on that one. Somehow I found this wonderful hidden message tarot deck by uh, a French designer, artist, living in Paris called Julien Paco. It was a big pleasure to buy it. It cost me 39 euros plus some postage and packing and it came wrapped up in a nice little sheet of uh, crepe paper and on it was written Merci Robert and it was signed by the artist. So that was extremely nice. It was a bit like buying art. And uh, as you know, buying art is a very nice thing to do. It really makes you feel uh, that life is worth living. I then discovered that this deck is brand spanking new. It was released in June of 2020. And so I think if you were to buy this deck, you would be one step ahead of your friends. You would really be on the cutting edge. It comes in a lovely box. And inside, you have 78 cards. 
They are an absolutely perfect tarot size. And they are printed very, very nicely. They're printed as nicely as anything, I think, on, on US game systems. They've got a slightly matte finish. They're not slippery. It's important that new cards are not too slippery. Otherwise, they just fly out of your hands straight onto the floor as soon as you start shuffling. Let's uh, just pause for the, the police car to whiz by. So what can we find out about Julian Paco from his website? It says here, Julian Paco is a French artist and illustrator living and working in Paris, France. Before becoming an illustrator, he was, by turns, an astrophysician, an international snooker player, a hypnotist, and an Esperanto teacher. So clearly a man of many talents. It then says here, he hopes he can someday have enough free time to devote himself to his real passion, time travel. I think what you can tell from um, Julian's website is that he, he has a kind of surreal style. And this was what attracted me to these wonderful cards. Let me show you a couple before we do the flip through. We start off with the Fool. And here's the Fool. And on the back of his staff is a pair of nylon stockings. I love that. The chariot has been replaced by one of those small French cars. I've forgotten what they're called. And the car is actually being pulled by... Looks like a mandolier, but... Uh, ladies. But lest we think this is a a misogynist design, the, the charioteer has also been replaced by a female figure. His strength picking up her husband instead of the lion. A wonderful wheel of fortune. Maybe that's a part of a penny farthing bicycle mounted on a stool. Justice here is now a, a man. The artist is free with gender in this in this pack. I love the hanged man hanging on a, a, a clothes hanger. <laughs> in honor of in honor of this deck, I have a clothes hanger behind me today, and I'm wearing my best Prada. It's a very stylish deck. It's very it's very Paris, I think. Maybe my favorite card is the death card. Um, death is now on a motorbike. Am I imagining things, or, or is this a reference to that movie, Orphée, that French movie where death is a beautiful woman, but I think she's accompanied by motorbike riders, or, or she may be on a motorbike herself, but death definitely seems to come on a motorbike. Mind you, motorbikes are, are deathly things, aren't they? A wonderful tower. You know, I don't like tarot decks that are just incredibly dark and everyone's a zombie or everything's dystopian or everyone's a junkie or everything's urban or blah, blah, blah. I mean, life isn't that bad. I like tarot packs that give you a, a, a range of images, some dark, some not. I kind of relate to these pictures of, of mummy and daddy dressed in 50s clothes. There we have um, the two of battens. I guess that's Dominion, isn't it? And that's, that seems to be Daddy going off to work to expand his empire. Maybe he works in an office. It's not all the 1950s. I, I think it also, it's collage style and it goes back to the early 20th century. I haven't perceived a colour scheme exactly in this deck that, that the four suits don't seem to have hard and fast colours. But the whole deck does have a colour palette. There's there's the nine of battens, the ten of battens, the page of battens. So we're seeing quite a lot of different sky colours. On the whole, I find the deck, it's close enough to ride a weight um, that I think it will be quite easy for me to read. And at the same time, it's far enough from ride a weight that I think it'll give me, I think it'll give my readings a kind of a shot in the arm. I think it'll slap me into the dream space a little bit. The King of Wands, for example, his crown is on fire and what a wonderful image. But nevertheless, you know, this seems to me quite respectful of 
of the of the rider weight. This that's clearly a rider weight image. They are all rider weight based images, but some of them have more of the rider weight details than others, and um, that's a, that about suits me fine. I find them in in coloured terms just really pretty, and. If you imagine that this is, as far as I know, a first edition, it's not expensive, it's extremely beautiful. I think this might become a collector's item in the future. There you go, there's a, there's a dark one. I love this, this is, this is so, so Paris, if I may say so. I'm, I'm looking for one of my favourites, the, the Two of Cups. Here in the Two of Cups, the artist has very... As far as I can tell, he's very cheekily swapped the heads. So we have the gentleman and the lady have, are wearing each other's clothes, which I love. Here, for example, is, is the Seven of Cups. It's, it's a Rider Waite image. And I haven't exactly compared it, but I think even the contents of the cups refers to the Rider Waite deck. But yet you feel you're in a different world. Fantastic. I believe that, that Mr. Paco is, is not a tarot reader himself. He's an artist. And I think artists find the tarot a very interesting aesthetic challenge. Nevertheless, he has obviously researched it. And these images do have the feeling of the meaning of the card. There. There you go. Very right away, but very, very fresh and new and smart and stylish. This is also one of my favourites. Sometimes they look like they're going to a McDonald's drive through But I think that's probably because the artist likes 1950s post-war design and, and, and McDonald's have kind of stolen that. The Knight of Pentacles is riding a tree rather than a horse, and why not? So that was the Hidden Message Tarot by Julian Paco. My advice is rush out, get yourself a copy while you still can. It's not rocket science. You go to julianpaco.com. That's Julian with an E and Paco with a D, clearly. I'll put, the, I'll put the link down in the text. Because it's birthday time, I'm not going to overtax myself this week. That's it. I post videos every fortnight on Sunday mornings at 6am Berlin time. So if you're an absolute devil and you've stayed up late, you might be able to catch it on Saturday evening in America. The next video will have my predictions for the month of September. So till then, stay well, drink plenty of Live Forever tea, and I'll now give you the full walkthrough of this lovely deck. Bye.